This is flipped mini lecture number nine, covering night sections 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. We have R of t, the position of a particle at time t is equal to x of t times i hat, whatever its x coordinate is, at times t times the unit vector i hat, plus y of t times j hat, and if you're in 3D, it's plus z of t times k hat. From this, you can form the average velocity. The average velocity in the two and three dimensional case is a vector. It's a vector that you get by taking r at time t plus delta t and subtracting r at times t and dividing all that by delta t. If the velocity is changing, then it might be sort of unsatisfactory to only know the average velocity. You might like to know the instantaneous velocity. And the way we get the instantaneous velocity is we imagine really scrunching down this time delta t. The way we write that mathematically is we say this is the limit that delta t goes to zero and of course, that means that this thing is basically a derivative, which we could write as dr of t dt. And then once we've taken that limit that delta t goes to zero, we no longer have to have uh, that sort of qualifier that it's only the average velocity. Now let's look at this component by component. r of t plus delta t is this entire thing evaluated at t plus delta t. And r of t is this entire thing right there. So we're going to uh, plug r of t plus delta t into this. So I've written it out here for you. x at t plus delta t times i hat plus y at t plus delta t times j hat plus z at t plus delta t times k hat. And then subtract off the exact same thing back at evaluated at time t itself. Now it's getting to be a bit much writing for me. Let me leave off the third dimension and just go back down to 2D. So it's pretty obvious how all this stuff generalizes to 3D. What we want to do next is we want to group like terms. You see how there's an I hat there and an I hat there and a J hat there and a J hat there. We want to group those like terms. Now I hat's a constant and J hat's a constant. And if you were in uh, 3D, there'd be one more term multiplying K hat. This thing here though, this, the limit that delta t goes to zero of that is something very familiar. We've already uh, encountered and defined that in one dimension. That, the limit that delta t goes to zero of x of t plus delta t minus x of t over delta t, that is dx of t dt. And this is dy of t dt, the derivative of y with respect to t. So this whole thing here simplifies a load and uh, the name we give to this, of course, this is, uh, this is v sub x at t, and this is v sub y at t, and this is v sub z at t. So what we have learned is that in order to get the velocity, the vector velocity from the position, all you have to do is differentiate each of these three functions, x of t, y of t and z of t. Let's go on to the acceleration. The acceleration at time t average is the velocity at time t plus delta t minus the velocity at times t divided by delta t. Now this is a vector, this is a vector, I've divided it by some scalar, this thing is some kind of vector. It's the acceleration vector. If you want to kind of ask, what is the acceleration at a particular moment in time, you have to, once again, scrunch this delta t down to zero. So you scrunch this delta t down to zero, which is this. You take the limit that delta t goes to zero of this. And uh, then this is, of course, just dv of t, the derivative of some vector function of time with respect to time. And then you could take away this, this little like fudge factor here that that was only an average acceleration. This is now an instantaneous acceleration. 
And once again, just like before, you have the three components of A. AX of T, if you work it through in group-like terms, AX of T is equal to DBX of T dt. And AY of T is equal to DBY of T dt. And DZ of T would equal DB sub Z of T dt. Ooh. Okay, all not so bad. That totally takes care of 4.1. Let's go on to 4.2. 4.2 is probably the most important special case, the one that like you get most story problems are asked about. Um, we'll have other special cases, but projectile motion is sort of like every physicist's favorite thing to make story problems on. So here's the situation with projectile motion. With projectile motion, you have some coordinate system. Let's say uh, this is the x direction, and let's say this is the y direction, and let's have coming out of the board the z direction. So let's just have good old z of t be zero. Let's have this thing go in a projectile motion some kind of parabola with uh, never going in out of the board or going into the board. So z of t is going to be zero. The cool thing about projectile motion is that y of t is also pretty simple. Not quite as simple as that, but it's also pretty simple. y of t is whatever y was at time zero plus, and here's the thing, the next thing it's plus whatever the initial velocity was in the y direction times t. And then for projectile motion uh, in the presence of gravity with no wind resistance or any other stuff like that, here on the surface of Earth, it would be minus one half g, that's 9.8 meters per second squared, times t squared. So you got your initial term, which sometimes we write just y sub naught, plus your velocity term times time and then minus your acceleration term because the acceleration is uh, minus g in the downward direction. x of t is very simple. It's just whatever x was at t equals zero plus, and it's so simple, it's whatever the initial velocity was in the x direction times t. The velocity in this direction is unchanged by gravity. It's the only acceleration is in that direction, downward. Okay, so let's do a couple things. Let's, since this, I'm claiming this is the most general solution, let's get the velocity using the definitions out of this. If this is my r of t, r of t, equals x of t times i hat plus y of t times j hat plus uh, z of t times k hat. Let's find out what dr of t dt is. dr of t dt, which is supposed to be our velocity vector, well, dx of t dt, take d by dt of that. Well, d by t dt of a constant is zero. d by dt of v naught x times t, that's a linear function. v naught x is just another constant multiplying t. d by dt of that just gives us v naught x. And then this i hat comes along for the ride. On the second term, uh, we have y of t times j hat, okay y of t times j hat, take d by dt of this. Well, this first term, whether you call it y of zero or y sub zero, is a constant, and derivative of a constant is zero. This second term is uh, another linear term, just like we had a linear term here. Now we've got a linear term in the y direction, so take d by dt of that, you get v naught y. And uh, then you gotta take d by dt of this, well, d by dt of, of t squared is 2t. The 2 cancels the half, so we've got minus gt. And this second term multiplies j hat. And then we need to take d by dt of the z, but clearly the derivative of 0 is 0, so we're all done there. So, 
there's v sub x of t, and there is v sub y of t. v sub x of t is the thing that multiplies i hat, and v sub y of t is the thing that multiplies j hat. Now, let's get a, which is equal to dv dt. Okay, we just calculated v. There's v. Let's take its derivative with respect to time. Okay, well this is a constant, and this is a constant. So the derivative with respect to time of that first thing, zero. Derivative with respect to time of the second thing, well, derivative of a constant times j hat, which is a constant, is nothing. So we just have the derivative of minus gt times j hat. The derivative d by dt of minus gt is minus g. So this says that the acceleration during projectile motion is minus g in the y direction. So now I'm gonna hit the last thing. I've done 4.1, which is sort of the general theory. I've done 4.2, which is projectile motion. I wanna do 4.3, which is this whole business of changing frames. Changing frames. So the simplest example of changing frames is suppose you have a set of railroad tracks. Okay, and suppose uh, a person that's sitting on the siding measures things like this. They've got this coordinate system that's sort of hovering over the railroad tracks, and the x direction of this coordinate system is that way, the y direction of this coordinate system is that way, and the z direction of this coordinate system is out of the board. Perfectly reasonable. Now, along comes a new person, okay? And I'm gonna show you what that new person's coordinate system is. The new person is sitting in a railway car on the train. And the train is going by with some velocity. V train sub x is just some number. I'll make it script V. Okay, the velocity of the train in the x direction is just script V. And there is no velocity of the train in the y direction or velocity of the train in the z direction. And this person who's sitting here on the train wants to make this their coordinate system. So they draw their x, their y, and their z like that. Except their coordinate system is moving with them. Ho, 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 ho. So we need to give their, their coordinate system is not the same as the person's coordinate system who's on the siding, so we need to give their coordinate system some kind of new name to distinguish it. So when this person, say, is like playing ping pong on the train and is trying to describe the motion of the ping pong ball back and forth on the ping pong table, this person's going to give an xt of t for the ping pong ball, a yt of t for the ping pong ball, and a zt of t for the ping pong ball. Okay, now the way I set things up, the person on the siding whose coordinate system is the same except not moving to the right, the person on the siding says that, yeah, I agree with the height of the ping pong ball and I agree with how much the ping pong ball is going out of the board. So the person on the siding agrees with that. But if this person here that's on the train says that the ping pong ball is like, well, I don't know, six feet away from them or something, the person on the siding says, well, it depends on what time you said it was six feet away from you because you're shooting, your train is shooting down the track that way with speed V. Okay, so if these two coordinate systems coincided at time t equals zero, then here's the formula x of t is equal to whatever the person on the train says the position of the ping pong ball is, plus how much the train has moved in the x direction according to the person on the siding, which is v times t. Now here I made it v times t. That set would say that at t equals zero, these people agree. So we have to get used to the idea that not only do coordinates depend on how you set up your coordinates. One person might do this. Another person might be weird and do this. And another person might be weird and, just, and use a moving coordinate system. And here's a relationship between a moving coordinate system and a stationary coordinate system. Okay, so now you guys are in a perfect position to read all of 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3.
and uh, we'll start doing problems on that stuff and then we'll only have a few more sections of four to go in the rest of the week.